Hello, welcome to another FilmFX tutorial. This time we're going to do some carpet bombing. So, please open the start scene in your 3ds Max and check what's in the scene already. We have the, as we're going to render with the Arnold renderer, we have the Arnold light, camera, FilmFX grid, and object source sphere and some ground, ground box. So. For carpet bombing, we're going to use several uh, sources across the FilmFX grid to create the effect of the car carpet bomb. Yeah. So for a start, let's check what's inside the object source. What's the settings? So we're going to use the solid source, which means that the inside of the sphere will be solid and all the emission will be happen on this um, you can see this selection kind parameter of the of the source and we're going to add fuel to the grid which will be later convert it to fire we'll add temperature and smoke add means that each frame this amount of temperature and smoke will be added to the voxels around the sphere. We'll also use the normal velocity of 500, which means that each frame velocity uh, that's 500 units will be added to the film effects grid in the normal direction of the source and we'll add some small amount of the turbulence to the grid. Since we need several uh, sources uh, and we already have a detonator sphere picked within this object source, we can just select both and we'll create six of those, So, which means five more. With film effects, when you do a clone like this, the each uh, source object will already have uh, the corresponding sphere uh, selected and added to, to the list. Also, note that this uh, source is not active all the time. It's active only two frames. So, first of all, those are the active keys that are animated. So, first of all, we have to scatter those uh, animation keys uh, along the timeline. Uh, so, let's assume that bombing goes from left to right. So, those on the left will explode first, and those on the right will be explode explode much later. So, we can shift keys for I don't know ten frames, for example. So that's goes around 25 we'll shift this to 35 let's make this to 40 and this one be, will come the latest and will be around frame 55 so that's like in 2 seconds all the bombs will go off. Another thing that we want to change so that each explosion looks a little bit different is the normal velocity. So for each of the source we can change a little bit uh, the, the uh, normal velocity so use whatever numbers you like make some slower and some faster explosions so that's something like around 10% and this one for the last we're going to have the biggest blast at the end you also want to scatter those sphere a little bit around the fume effects simulation area and to group them something like this for example 
this one will be the strongest one and the latest let's do it something like this the next thing uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add those sources to the film effects for the simulation so press pick button and then the H on your keyboard and select all the object sources in the scene to add them all to the simulation and now when you look at the viewport you'll see how sources are activated so yeah that's pretty much like that so this film effect grid is already set up with the parameters so I'm not going to go through each parameter change and everything rather I'll focus on the what's important and why certain parameters are set as they are so first thing first there is a in FFX5 parameter check option under the file which gives you great information what's been changed in the in the scene that you're loading uh, what's been changed from the default values at least so for example you see that we have pretty large uh, grid dimensions and thus we have to increase the grid spacing so the grid spacing is 10 which will produce at a, at a maximum the grid size that will require 25 gigabytes of memory for the simulation No, none of the sites are boundless which means they, they will stay where they are at the maximum uh, grid expansion and what's important that we set the sensitivity to velocity plus fields which means that the adaptive grid will expand where there are fields which means smoke, fuel and temperature but also it will take care that small velocities also trigger the grid expansion uh, velocity expansion is really important for the rolling smoke and for the simulation where you want uh, natural and um, physically accurate motion also we've changed the output range the simulation we run for 120 frames in film 5 we have the minimize grid and the padding options which will actually shrink all the unused grid space and save as such to the disk to save disk space and time but just to make sure we'll add some padding some extra voxels to the grid so you can use for uh, for example for motion blur and things like that the channels we are going to export are fuel, smoke and temperature but if you are going to do some retiming and uh, probably some compositing and things like that you might export velocity as well so under the simulation uh, tab there are just few things that were changed from the default values and that's one of them is the maximum simulation steps which is set to 2 we set to 2 because of the really high uh, normal velocities around 500 which is as you can see by the dimension, dimensions uh, 50 times uh, larger velocities than is the grid spacing so simulation steps are limited to two uh, you can get with the uh, simulation steps one but you can also try to use uh, higher steps and see what you get basically what you get with uh, more simulation steps is that uh, smoke will tend to expand maybe a little bit further further and everything will be a little bit more smoother so we'll we have increased the gravity to three uh, with this gravity parameter here you will control how fast the smoke rises 
you could achieve that for example by increasing the temperature buoyancy but then you will have to change the smoke buoyancy and the fuel buoyancy and everything like that so the good place to change the overall speed of the of the, the smoke motion or the uh, simulation motion so to speak that is affected by the forces is the gravity this is also a parameter that you can change a sense of scale using the default for vorticity 2 nothing changed here and you can notice we, that we don't use any artificial turbulent noise because on the grid that is at this detail that's basically not needed if you want to add something some turbulent noise to this just make sure to keep it real low because grid spacing is 10 uh, try not to pass something like 0 0.5 or something like that to, to add more than it's needed uh, you notice that we didn't pick the uh, the ground the ground object as the collision because it's really simple simple f floor uh, plane that we can set here with the blocking sides we set it to minus z axis to be the blocking so the floor will not allow the smoke temperature fuel or any other property to pass through through the grid and get lost so for the fuel we've set the ignition temp temperature to 10 from from 100 uh, that's because just one th there's just one reason so we are sure that all the fuel that's inside the grid will be converted to fire if you rise this value to something really high there might be some fuel that's not reacted inside the grid and we don't want we don't want, we don't want that the burn rate is uh, set to 10 so the f fuel will burn slower and linger along around a lot longer so heat production is set to 100 which means that burning fuel will add heat to the simulation we set the expansion 3 so the expansion is a parameter that's really good for the simulation and to achieve the, the rolling motion but if you if you set too large expansion value the the explosion will expand a lot a lot it, it can cover the whole grid for example if you just set this to six it's a very sensitive perimeter and it's common for all the sources that's why we have expansion set to three and with the object source normal velocity we add some variation between each of those sources to the to the explosion effect also we've set enable the fire create smoke option which means that when this fire when this actually fuel converts to fire and burns it will create smoke as well all other other parameters are as they are default so with all the parameters for the set for the simulation we can try to see what we've done since we're going to render with Arnold but we still have to see how our simulation runs in the viewport we'll stick with a standard shader because Arnold and Redshift volume shader doesn't show up in the viewport and for start we're just going to need to use uh, smoke and we can set this opacity a little bit lower now just remember that these parameters will not be used in rendering uh, right now they are just used for the for the viewport and for the simulation so we're going to enable the GPU viewport display 
Now, once the simulation is done, it's time for us to play with some rendering parameters. So, we're going to open the Arnold Render View and start. So, right now we have the standard Finfix standard shader, but we need Arnold and Redshift volume and we need smoke, fire, fuel. That's right. For this to work, you will need to, of course, we already added, but you have to add standard volume material to the FilmFX, FilmFX grid. And just one more thing, we need to export the temperature as well as you can see there is no fire in the grid. Now just a little bit detail until the Arnold loads the cache with the temperature. So this is basically what uh, the simulation looks like. We have set it with the Arnold Sky, Sky Dome is the daylight system and we're using the texture that's located just a moment here, here's the sky, so basically nothing special, sun tint and sky tint the white a little bit attenuated from the default default values we've, we've increased a little bit uh, of the exposure to brighten the the image and it's important to increase a little bit for the uh, samples those are the few samples on the geometry and volume samples and samples that are calculated on the smoke so you don't get too much noise. Uh, I'll go quickly through the Arnold render uh, settings, render settings, uh, and you can see here that just using three AA camera samples because there are not many geometry in the scene, it's mostly volume, and we use uh, diffuse five samples. Those are the samples on the on the geometry, and volume indirect samples are the samples on the volume volume itself. Uh, we are using the ray depth of three for the volume, which means that light in the film effects will scatter three times. Thank you for watching, and see you next time with another tutorial.